Departmental Astrophysics faculty members undertake observational, computational, and theoretical research. But all of their studies touch in some way or another supernovae, stellar explosions that briefly outshine the entire galaxy. The creation and mutation of nuclei in these explosions are tracked on the chart of nuclides by Professor Carla Froelich. This chart provides us with a roadmap to track the nuclear processes we study in our program. In these plots of atomic number versus neutron number, we investigate and model several types of nucleosynthesis processes, for example, the rapid neutron capture process or the slow neutron capture process. If you think of chemistry class, you've seen the periodic table and all these elements are actually made in stars or in the Big Bang. So what my research really is, is focusing on is how do you make these elements? Where are they made? Understanding the astrophysical sites, understanding the nuclear processes, and understand where these elements come from. The two most, most abundant elements in the universe are hydrogen and helium. Those are made in the Big Bang, so at the very beginning. Everything else is made afterwards in stars or at the end of a star's life. So as you form a star out of hydrogen and helium, throughout the life of the star, the star is powered by nuclear reactions at the center. But if your star is massive enough, you can continue and turn your carbon and oxygen into magnesium and neon and silicon and eventually iron. So if you have a massive enough star at the end of the star's life, you'll have like an onion structure with an iron core and then some lighter and lighter elements to the outside until you have a huge um, hydrogen envelope at the outside of the star. However, once you go past iron, it becomes much more complicated. And so making elements beyond iron, you can't just fuse two iron nuclei to something heavier. So we know of two processes that roughly contribute about half and half to the heavy elements, but leave a lot of unanswered questions. Their time scale is very different. So one is called the rapid neutron capture process, or R process, and the other process is called the slow neutron capture process, or S process. So that's one of the other aspects we study in my group is connection between the nuclear reactions and nuclear physics input and the abundance of the nuclei you, you make. But it turns out if you look very carefully, there's a discrepancy between observed abundances of these heavy elements and what we can explain with the S and with the R process. People have proposed an additional process, and they call this additional process a lighter element primary process. The process that I'm working on and that is a strong candidate for this LEP process is the neutrino P process. So we do spherically symmetric simulations of core collapse supernovae, not to understand the explosion mechanism, but to understand the nucleosynthesis. So our interest is what are the conditions and how does that impact the nucleosynthesis? But most recently, we've also got interested in modeling a special type of supernovae that are a possible explanation of these very recent observations. And it turns out the supernovae, there's a class of supernovae that are much brighter than your regular per collapse and type 1a supernovae. We call them superluminous supernovae. So in my group, we do spherically symmetric, but also multidimensional simulations of parent stability supernovae and with collaborators that can take our simulation data and convert it into light curves, simulated light curves, we are trying to explain at least some of these superluminous supernovae that have recently been observed. And it's a very current topic because over the last couple of years, the number of superluminous supernovae that we know and need to explain has increased by a large factor at least. The Big Bang, stellar interiors, and supernova remnants provide the playing field for the investigations of Carla Froelich and other faculty members undertaking cutting-edge astrophysics research at NC State.